Uh, Jacob has a talk, and I can't read with all this light. Um, yeah. I know what I'm doing. Um, relational databases and stuff, so let's give him a hand. Uh, hello. OK. Uh, welcome to my talk about representing trees in databases. Um, and many thanks to the organizers to bring DjangoCon Europe to this wonderful location. Um, hi, I'm Jacob. Um, in 1997, I used Python for the first time. And in 2011, um, I switched to Django. And since then, I never looked back, and I only use Django for web development. Um, I must admit that I contributed almost nothing to the Django framework itself. Uh, instead, I'm maintaining a few popular third-party Django apps. Um, for instance, uh, Django Shop, uh, that's an e-commerce framework based on Django CMS, uh, Django Angular. Um, on DjangoCon 2014, I gave a talk on how Django Angular GS plays nice with uh, Django. Uh, Django CMS Cascade, that's a full-featured plugin system for Django CMS. Uh, Django WebSocket Redis, a WebSocket library for Django written in 2013, uh, before Channels uh, was available. Um, Django Admin Sortable 2, a add sorting capabilities to list views in the Django admin. Um, Django SaaS processor. A uh, reference for your SAS, your SCSS files directly from uh, Django templates and uh, Python code. In late 2016, on uh, Django under the hood, I inherited, together with uh, Jacopo and others, um, uh, uh, Django Treebeard from the then maintainer Gustavo Picon. And having to maintain that library inspired me to give this uh, talk here. Um, I'm working as a freelance software developer and uh, I live in Innsbruck in Austria. So <coughs> what's our problem and what we do we try to solve? Uh, say we have a grocery store with a bunch of products organized in different uh, categories and subcategories. Um, and just as in the virtual world, where we use database tables and uh, model to model products and categories. Um, in Django, we use a model entity to describe each category. These model entities then are grouped into a tree. Um, whenever we have to render a list view of our products belonging to, say, category meat, uh, we need to know its subcategories. Or um, when we want to render the breadcrumbs for category turkeys, we need to know their ancestors. When building a database model, it turns out that the most obvious solution is not always the best. In this presentation, I will f show four different solutions to solve this problem. Um, where else do we use um, hierarchical representations? Uh, in content management systems, to organize pages and nested uh, content. Hierarchies in corporates for discussion threads, for emulating folders, and many more. So solution one is the adjacent lists. That's the most natural representation of a tree in a database, uh, is to have a foreign key pointing to its parent node. Here, the numbers in the nodes represent their primary keys. Um, as Django model, it looks like this. Um, we add a nullable foreign key pointing onto self. This creates a recursive relationship. This statement shows the uh, simplified um, transition of our Django model into a database schema. And this kind of representation commonly is known as the adjacent list uh, SQL pattern. A common use case is to find all nodes below a given node. In this example, we look for the descendants of the highlighted node. A Python function to get the des its descendants might be implemented such as this. 
First, we create a career set for all immediate children. Then, we recursively call that function for over all children in that query set. Here, the problem is that traversing the tree scales really badly. Um, we need one database query for each depth level. This adds many round trips between the database and our Django application, and we get an iterator instead of a query set, losing all the useful methods on that class. An alternative would be to, to, to do the recursive join over all the nodes. A SQL statement um, for such a query might look like this. Since we don't know the depths of the tree, building such a statement in a generic way is nearly impossible. And results are grouped by columns rather than by rows, so that's not a very good option. Ascending the tree is a bit simpler. Here we look for the ancestor of the highlighted node. But we still have to do a recursion on the function get ancestors with four separate queries to the database. Here we also use the chain keyword to build our result set. But again, we return an iterator instead of a query set, losing all the useful method on the methods on that class. Another problem is attribute filtering. <coughs> Say our nodes are colored and we want to find the red ones. If we change uh, the code to filter by color, we would miss out the node with the ID 16. Therefore, we must do the filtering by the application. And th this means that we first have to fetch all nodes from the database. Uh, and afterwards, uh, we can apply the filter in Python but that causes a lot of unnecessary data transfer. Therefore, some engineers have looked for alternative solutions. Uh, for instance, the materialized pass tree was described by Vadim uh, Tropashko in uh, SQL Design Patterns and published in 2006. In the materialized pass tree, we encode the position of each node inside a car field. For each depth level, we use the word with a fixed step length. The root node starts with A. To its first child, we append another A, giving AA. For its sibling, we use AB. For um, its next child, uses uh, ABA, and its sibling, ABB, and so on. Um, this materialized path is applied to all nodes of the tree. If you have multiple trees, the path field on the root node of the second tree starts with a B. Therefore, we ca can have multiple roots, uh, multiple trees uh, uh, with uh, one root each. Here, we create a Django model for our node. Instead of a foreign key onto self, we use an index car field named path. In that field, we store an encoded position of our node inside the tree. By default, Django Treebeard uses a step length of four with an alphabet of 36 characters. This allows each node to have a maximum of about 1.6 million immediate children. But in the next slides, uh, for simplicity, I use a step length of one with an alphabet of um, 26 characters. So here are examples. We want to find all descendants of the highlighted node. The pass field contains the word AAA. So we look for all nodes starting with that pattern. Um, this Python function returns a query set um, for all the descendants. Here we use the starts with restriction on the query filter. This makes use of the database index on the pass field. Therefore, we have a fast uh, query um, to fetch the subtree. We also want to exclude the starting node from the query set. And this is a simplified um, SQL statement. It uses the like clause with the percent sign at the end. Therefore, the text index works in the database as expected. Remember, beginning the like clause with a person sign would require a full table scan, but so the uh, database index uh, still works. If you create your own tree model, use an alphabet with a consistent sorting order and check the collations of your database 
UTF-8 UTF characters in your alphabet are not a good choice because depending on your database settings and language settings, uh, they may have different sorting orders. With this short addition to the code, we can return the query set ordered by depth level. We want to traverse the tree from the highlighted node upwards. Again, we use the path field. Here, it's the word uh, AAA, CA. By removing the letters from the end of that word, we can build a list of ancestor path values. In our example, AAAC, AAA, AA, and finally, our root node A. Now it's just a simple lookup to find the ancestor nodes. We just have to check if the path attribute is in that list. This time we return the query set ordered by tree level from the bottom to top. Nested sets tree is another approach for solving our tree problem. It, be, it has been described by Joe Chalko in Trees and Hierarchies in SQL for Smarties and published in 2012. The idea between nested sets is to create an envelope over the, uh, over the tree. Each node has two integer fields, left and right. They both follow this rule for each node. Left is smaller than all descendants of the given node, and right is greater than all descendants of a given node. We can draw uh, a graph connecting these numbers together. Then this graph cuts each node twice. The first time while descending, and the second time while ascending. Except for leaf nodes, they always have consecutive numbers for the left and right values. Here, for instance, uh, 16 and 17. Using these two numbers, we can traverse the tree in both directions with one single database query. In Django, we add two positive integer fields to our nested sets model. Remember, left and right are not foreign keys, but they're indexed. Um, and since, the, since these numbers um, are used a lot in our qu queries, we add uh, a database index. So we want to find all descendants of the highlighted uh, node. First, we take the left and the right value of that node. We know that both values for left and right of all descendants lie between those two numbers between 3 and 22. Um, this simple Python function returns a query set of all descendants. First, we construct a, uh, um, a range query. This filters out the whole subtree sub of our node. Finally, we exclude the node from the query since uh, we are interested only in the subtree. And again, we get the query set as expected. Um, this time, however, unordered by depth. For completeness, this is the simplified SQL statement for that uh, query. We want to find the ancestors of the highlighted node. First, we check the left and right values of that node. We know that the left value <coughs> of all ancestors must be smaller than our node's left value. We also know that the right value of all ancestors must be greater than our node's right value. This Python function returns a query set of all ancestors. With these two values, we can narrow down the query using a simple comparison. And again, we get the expected query set. For ordering, we could either use the left or right value, and here for completeness, um, check the SQL statement for that query, simplified SQL statement. <laughs> so adding a node to a uh, nested sets tree is a little bit more complicated. Say we want to add a new node just between, uh, below, the high, uh, below the highlighted node. Um, this Python function um, inserts a child node into our tree. First, we filter out the nodes which will be affected by the update. Then, we conditionally update the left values depending on their position. The right value is always increased by 2. 
Now that we updated the right part of the tree, we can use the two freed uh, values for left and right. The new node now becomes part of the tree. Deleting a node is a similar operation with oppos opposite deltas. Solution four. Common table expressions have been introduced into the NC SQL 99 standard and are now supported by all major database systems. In MySQL since version 8, in MariaDB since version 10.2.2, in SQLite since 3.8.3, .3, and in Postgres since 8.4. Common table expressions are used to simplify complex joins and subqueries and to provide a means to query hierarchical data. Here's a working SQL statement. First, we define a virtual table called tree. This SQL finds our starting node and initializes the recursive function. This part recursively fetches the descendants of our starting node. The last SQL statement fetches all descendants of the node with ID 4 excluding itself. If you have duplicates, remove the all, but this requires extra time for sorting, so, so leave it out by default. Remember, don't put a semicolon after the with recursion clause, otherwise our virtual table, tree, is not available anymore. With this query, we can use the adjacent list pattern to fetch all descendants with one single query. The tree is still traversed recursively, but this time inside the database, and that's much faster because we have only one round trip from our application to the database. To fetch the ancestors of a given starting node, we just have to reverse the condition. To my knowledge, the Django ORM currently does not offer any functions to implement common table expressions. So if we want to use this database feature, we have to use raw SQL. Now, let's compare the different solutions. The adjacent lists uh, without common table expressions shines for all operations uh, except for tree traversals. However, this is the operation we usually uh, use most. It only requires one additional field pointing on, uh, onto the parent node. Therefore, we don't have any size limitations. If you need multiple routes and sibling ordering, you need, to, uh, you need extra fields in your database model. The materialized path tree is a good compromise for all operations. The path field has a nice side effect that we don't need an uh, extra field for multiple routes or sibling ordering. Depending on the alphabet and step lengths, the size of the tree then is naturally limited. Strings in the path field can become very long. In addition, we have to create a text index. This requires a lot of extra memory. Nested sets pattern is another interesting approach and commonly used. Tree traversals are very fast. However, when adding or deleting a node, we must update big parts of the tree. If you get one of the left or right numbers wrong, your complete tree is screwed up. Um, by using common table expressions in adjacent lists, the problem of slow tree traversal is solved. Therefore, in my opinion, this is the best choice and should be used whenever possible. Computing the depths, no, uh, depths of a node can be inter uh, integrated into the recursive SQL statement while fetching the tree. So let's uh, compare three libraries which are available to solve uh, the tree problem. Um, Django MPTT is the most uh, well-known library. It implements the nested set tree pattern, uh, but identifies itself as, as modified pre-order tree traversal, and therefore uh, MPTT. Um, Django Treebeard implements the first three SQL pattern I've shown, the adjacent lists without common table expressions, materialized paths, and nested sets. They all share the same API to manipulate the tree, so it's easy to exchange one against the other. And uh, Django Tree is the newest player of Django uh, uh, apps to solve this problem. 
It's, by the way, the only one using common table expressions. Uh, however, it declares itself as alpha and only supports Postgres as a database. Therefore, if your app shall be unopinionated to any databases, uh, that's not an option for you. Um, a side note, uh, in Django CMS uh, version 3.1, Django MPTT has been replaced uh, by Django Treebeard. Uh, the release notes uh, states, um, site, over the years, MPTT has proven not to be fast enough for big tree operations with more than 1,000 nodes. Tree corruption because of uh, transactional errors has also been a problem. And further, uh, Django Treebeard should make working with and using Django CMS better, faster, and reliable. And for instance, uh, the other big CMS, Wagtail, and Django Oscar, they both uh, use Django Treebeard to manage their internal uh, trees. So what I would like to see uh, in the future, um, add common table, table expression support directly into the Django ORM. There is an issue, it's uh, 28919, uh, is a proposal for this, but um, it's no uh, decisions have uh, taken, be taken yet. And if realized, implement a tree library similar to those three um, which already exist. And if you're working on a project which requires a modern tree implementation for your Django project, uh, please contact me. Any questions? We will take questions in the form of a question at the microphone if anyone has any questions. No one? No questions? Will you take questions later? Oh. oh. Hi, Russell. Hey, hey Dagger. Um, I wonder if you could go over the indexing requirements on, on the, uh, those forms of the tree uh, again. So it, it, is it just a matter of text indexing the uh, the uh, the path the field? Materialized path and, and integer indexing the... Uh, the uh, left and right left values. And right. So is that all you need? Is there, is yeah, that that's all? everything you need. Okay, so and you, you get all the performance benefits. You don't actually need to do anything special on those indexes beyond them doing basic integer, basic string indexing. Well, if you have, if you have special database requirements, maybe, but those libraries, they just use the normal, uh, the normal uh, ind indices which are available. Sure, okay. All right, cheers. So. Anybody else? Um, so in your research, did you not find any implementations of a closure table? Sorry? In your research, did you not find any implementations of a closure table for Django? That's another form of doing trees. Um, no. That's, it somehow, I, I somehow missed that. OK. I was just curious why. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh -huh, okay, because all the libraries I was using was they either used MPTT or Chibert, and I never encountered any requirements for that uh, for that Django application. So sorry about that, but uh. um, you mentioned the need of extra memory uh, for uh, querying uh, with Django Treebird. Uh, like the text field that you say that it required a lot of extra memory. Mm -hmm. uh, can you give us uh, an example of size on how much is a lot of memory? Well, you have to consider that um, with Django Treebird, you have a step length of four. Uh, with, um, so each depth level has four characters. And if you have a, if you have, let's say, uh, a depth of, of, of thousand, you, then you have four thousand characters per node, and you have to build an index over those four thousand characters per node. So that may sum up in case you have some size limitations on your database. database. It's not really nowadays. It's not really really huge, but I just wanted to mention it that uh, it could be. Um, for instance, the uh, nested sets, uh, there, there the limitations are much smaller because you, are, you have only numbers and uh, just inter integer numbers and you build an index over, over those integer numbers. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So, here. 
Uh, you mentioned that you replaced Django MPTT with Django Tree Beard in, uh, in Django CMS, right? Uh, no, I, I didn't do it. it I replaced. didn't do it, but uh, the developers of Django CMS did it. Yes. So do you have knowledge which of the algorithms from Django Tree Beard they, the, they use as a default? As uh, materialized as path. All right. All so right. so they, they, they <laughs> of course. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, is working? Okay. Ah, perfect. Um, I have a question. Uh, is there, or why do you limit the alphabet? Because if I think about um, if you store a varchar field and you would store it as UTF-8, for example, where you would do just eight bits per character, if you limit your alphabet, you kind of waste a lot of bits um, in, uh, in that tree path. Why not use a large alphabet that is like a complete set of, for example, UTF-8? I've, first of all, I have to say I didn't write any of those libraries. Um, oh, okay. I inherited Django Treebeard uh, because uh, Gustavo Picon gave up development, and uh, since we use that in um, applications uh, for uh, for clients, and since Django CMS relied on it, uh, somebody had to take over the um, uh, the maintenance of of that library. I just looked into the code and I saw that uh, he was using 36 characters. Um, I assume it's because of I assume it's because of collation problems. Uh, if you if your databases are configured in different uh, yeah. uh, with different sorting order for alphabets, I assume I don't know. Thanks. We have time for one more. Okay. Um, did you do any uh, performance checks that you have some numbers compared to the client-side solutions with the CTE solutions on the database systems? Uh, no, I didn't do that. I didn't, I didn't make any benchmarks on that. Okay, let's thank Jacob again.